Uh, it's <laughs> working. Uh, so for a moment, we will we 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 play. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, he was actually playing uh, pub games. Mm -hmm. e every single time I saw Kai P playing in the in the competitive game during the qualifier, it's like Sebastian was just grinding pubs. Sebastian grinds a lot of pubs, and you know what? I've been queued against him so many times. He's really mad now. He never was this mad, but he, he yeah, is fucking mad. Are you mad. being mad, like, tilted, like, every time he plays? Like no, like, he gets really upset at teammates as long as they don't do expert-level moves. He's going to really? blame them. Yeah, yeah, he does it a lot. I can imagine you being one of those people that would then do the opposite of an expert move just to piss him off. I would never intentionally lose him, Martobi. This is not I have watched you intentionally lose MMR since you came to America. That's not true. I'm still 8K. <laughs> Doesn't mean you haven't lost MMR. S fouring this shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's 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 look at our game, bro. Let's have a look at what's going on here. As of course, Team Empire with the first pick here, they banned out Mirana and Doom, which led Kaipi to ban out Bounty Hunter and Void. And here comes the Beastmaster first pick, still high rated. I'm pretty happy we see a Doom ban out because I've been watching a lot of Dota. I've been up since 8 a.m. local time. It's uh -huh. now 1 a.m. local time. And uh, there has been a lot of Doom in all of the qualifiers. There has. Happy to see him banned. The, this this guy is a bit of like, a bit. he's a bit of a dick. Uh, to put it out nicely. Yes. Uh, that Infernal Blade ability is unbelievably good, especially when we're seeing so many uh, of these tanky cores, like high HP cores <laughs> being picked up. Like everyone's like, hey, we can build into a heart. And yep. it's like, well, I just come in and I do a percentage based damage of your health. It's just they scale so great as well into late game. And as you say, it just works good against most heroes. If it's a tanky hero, then sure, you just lock them down forever. If it's a squishy hero, well, mm -hmm. you don't want to get targeted by Doom at all if you're squishy. Yeah. You're gone. I also love the fact that like, Team Empire ban out the Mirana. There's very few teams you'd ban a Mirana out in the yep. first two, but Kaipi is definitely one of them. They've actually been running it as a Sing Sing mid yep. uh, most predominantly, so it's it's kind of understandable. Be before we move on, we start talking about like Wisp IO combinations because we'll just let them pick it and we'll work it out. Um, shout out to everyone who's currently tuning in. Yes. Obviously, we're on the fourth stream, so uh, we're looking to get some attention down to the four stream. So if, if you want to help us out with that, you, we're going to do what we did today with the Veggies game. Everyone, it doesn't matter who you are. If you have zero people on your stream, yes. forward slash host beyond the summit four. Yes. Tweet it please. out on Facebook as well if you want to. So share it on your social networks. We are doing the first game in the European region. We're making it our ambition, me and Toby, that every stream that we're doing, we want to have the most hosts, if not the most yeah. viewers. We don't need, we don't need viewers. Yeah. We, we need the, uh, the dedicated support of the fans that are watching. It's a simple, simple move, and everyone can do it, Toby. It is. Forward slash host beyond the summer fall. Save a stream. Uh, Team Empire. Hello, Slaughter. So they have minus armor from Slaughter. They have the attack speed from Beastmaster. They have great disables. Level 1 Roshan. I wonder <laughs> where... Yeah, I mean, they have a, <laughs> they have have a good <laughs> Roshan like level lineup, one. <laughs> but early Roshans <laughs> are not important anymore. Unless you want the Aegis. That's the only thing. Yeah. Rosh gives no experience anymore. It's so terrible. Um, <laughs> but... I mean, I'm not complaining. I, I w never was a big fan of the early Roche. It's very lame. <laughs> anyway, I mean, Slardar, w I was watching the WePlay finals. I was watching all four games last night. I must say, Slardar was played in the first three out of those four games. Mm -hmm. He won every single one. MVP were the ones to play it in the first two of them. And in the third game, Vega just went like, oh, wait, maybe we can play it. And then they did, and then they stomped. It was just not even close in any of the games as well. I think Slaughter is crazy good with a new armlet. The five extra armor when you turn it on. Mm -hmm. You are tanky. You're going to be a monster. And against Wisp. Minus armor on Wisp is never fun. Yeah. I'm actually wondering too why Kai P decided to go for both the Io and the Witch Doctor. I uh, haven't seen many teams pick up both of their supports in the early phase, especially to make it this obvious. Like, you could you could have yourself a Doom Ringer pick up. It's like, well, it could be a fourth. It could be actually be a core. Right. Uh, you got these question marks that are there, but with Bone Seven's draft, like, there's very few question marks when you pick up a Wisp as well as a Witch Doctor. It's like, okay, well, we're looking at a heal combo hero to keep someone else alive, like right. Red Restoration and Tether combining together, but it's still going to mean you're running a dual lane of some sort. Right. And worth noting, something I respect Empire for here is they didn't ban out any of the Wisp combinations. Because there's two ways to go about it. Either you try really hard to get rid of the dangerous combos, but there are so many things you could pack up with the Wisp. I mean, 
a lot of heroes are gonna dominate. There's Tiny, there's CK, there's Sven, there's uh, Ursa if you want to go really off the hook, you know, there, and that's just mentioning a few. So I think it's a better idea to do what Emperor are doing. Ban out some heroes that are gonna control the fights in nasty ways. Batrider is really annoying for you. It's gonna cancel blink daggers. It's just in general gonna pester you. And the Bristleback, well, while I think they could have dealt with it with a Slaughter Minus armor, yeah. maybe they have some reason to be scared of this hero. Um, as, so. as far as like maybe the early laning phase, like it could just come down to that. Like if, right. it, is, if it is like an IO Bristleback dual off lane, yes. like the Slaughter is not gonna have as much room to do what he wants to do. Extremely strong lane, and uh, I mean it, it was something that way back MVP were playing a ton as well. The Wisp Bristleback and just going off lane mm -hmm. and destroying lanes. And here we go. Some is, it, is it Bambo Night Stalker off? Mm -hmm. It should be an off lane Night Stalker. Something Bambo has liked to do for a very long time. It's still very, very strong in this patch. And if you want to go for the pretty early Iron Talon, you can definitely catch up jungle. And then minute four, you will have your boots and start roaming around in Genki. Mm -hmm. um, but I think he's going to pressure lane. If it's Bambo, he's going to be on that lane. Yeah. I'm actually almost sad to see him playing something like a Night Stalker. Like, having like, those quick jump-in, big playstyle heroes seems to suit Bambo more. Like, he was playing uh, Clockwork during the Open Qualifiers as well, and really showcasing what he can do with such heroes. That's Yeah, that's pretty fair. I think I think he does well on, on heroes that look to go in and pick one off and get out, though. And Night Stalker, while he's not super fast at doing it, he still kind of does it. He needs everything to happen around him when he goes in, though. Yeah. But and and that's where Bamboo doesn't always yeah. work because like Bamboo likes to go off by himself. <laughs> yep. Uh, like if he sees an opportunity, he'll go for it, and everyone's just like, "Oh crap, we better go with him, right?" Mm -hmm. So with an Ice Stalker, that's gonna be a little bit more difficult. And uh, Sing Sing Venomancer. Oh. Yeah, they're going for the Veno. Wait, hang on, hang on. Is is it actually gonna be Sing Sing, or do you run it the safe lane? Because I know the Chinese run it with the safe lane Venomancer. I reckon they're gonna do a mid. It depends if Empire picks something they don't want to have a Veno mid against, but there's basically nothing they don't want to pair up a Venom mid of them. And right yeah, now... Who, who would kind of fuck... Like, I mean, screw with him. <laughs> I mean, it's possibly a really strong lane. Like Queen, I don't even think it's an issue. Maybe. She has great base damage. So if you get out last hit. But Sing Sing is pretty mechanically skilled. Actually, so I think they're confident. Here's another question too. Do you push the Beastmaster into a fourth position? Where you could run a Co-op and Slaughter on the lanes and then get yourself another core? Because it, it feels to me like right now if Team Empire can go later, like you actually uh, run, <laughs> uh, I don't want to say slider off lane because that doesn't really kind of work for me. No, no I think they're going to go pretty standard here and just put a carry slider off lane Beastmaster to mid queen and then pick up a second support with the earth. And I'm not sure what yet, but it has to be some range support coming in for Empire. Uh, I think Could so. they get away with the jungler? I don't think so. I think their lanes are going to be way too susceptible for that. Because this, like, like Enchantress would be brilliant in this game if she can get that that spike. Mm, she she would be okay, but I I don't think it's going to work out for them. And yeah, there's one really strong support for them that they could have grabbed D Disruptor. Sad hero for them to be removed. No late like, game option from the Spectre at least. Yeah, I wonder what's. Uh Kaipi are going to grab as their last hero. But first we're going to get to see what Empire want to do here. I don't know. Well, there, there's a number of heroes that you don't want to pick. Like, Crystal Maiden would fit their draft really well. But against the Night Stalker, against the Wisp combo, you will want to be careful yeah. about what your support is. You, you actually kind of got screwed by Kaipi's draft. Because, like, with the Witch Doctor, like, you don't have the instant counter to the IO. Mm. Disrupt is normally their second go-to style hero. And right now, unless Earth Spirit gets a good kick or Slada gets a good crush... The relocate in is still going to do something. But who are you relocating with right now? Like, is, like, do you still go for the classic combos? Do you get something like the CK oh, up, here for, up here for Kai P? Because I think he's probably going to be the strongest hero to go up against Team Empire. CK would do fairly well, but I just don't love it against Lina and Queen. Or, like, Lina you, you, being You're worried Phantasm's well. just going to disappear straight yeah, away? Yeah, your Phantasm's will actually die. I don't think that's the hero. I think Sven is still a decent option here if they want to go for some damage. Uh, the armor is going to be great against Slaughter as well. It kind of mitigates the physical damage from from Empire's Draft. Uh -huh. um, and it's still a good relocate hero. I mean, he's going to farm extremely fast, and then you can bring him to fights. He doesn't even have to carry a TP scroll, you know. Just fix that. Um, but I love this pick, actually, of the Lina. Normally, Lina support can be hard to play, but with a Slaughter, you have the setup stun. So just follow up after that. I'm That's actually just liking... Like, I, I'm always a big fan of having, oh. like... 
like Nuke is like Lion and Lena up against Io. Like wow. you come into the fight and so you're just gonna get popped. And I think Queen of Pains have actually been moving more towards also like early Veil. Mm -hmm. Um so you could actually get like a really nice magical combo out from them. There could be there I, could I, be, I don't know um, if you get it in this game. I'm just thinking like can you pop Sing Sing before it gets an over off? Yeah, I, I think that's it's gonna be a risky play to make because if he gets levels and uh the HP just comes after that, it's gonna be really hard to pop. But the Slark here, he's definitely one of the patch winners. And I want to mention, there's a Beastmaster on Empire. There's a Night Stalker and a Slark and a Veno on Kaipi. Why am I highlighting these heroes? Because of Vision. It's just about controlling oh, yeah. the Vision of the game. There's four heroes that are dedicated that really, really focus around this. The Veno Wards, the Night Stalker with his uh, Darkness Vision. Uh, same for Slark, also has Night Vision, full Night Vision on these three heroes. And you can also D-Ward easily with Slark. Beastmaster's Hawks are going to be amazing. It's just, it's just about initiation being for your team. Well, let's get it underway. As I realize, I don't think my yeah. <laughs> I need a default hut it, so so we actually blend our overlay in nicely. Team Empire versus Kai B. So our first game of the European qualifier. Uh, we should have a lot more to go. <laughs> really. I'm just uh, enhancing the speed of the mouse too. <laughs> so slow. Actually, yeah. we'll quickly bring up as well, as far as our group goes, so we can keep our eyes on this one. So as, as far as this group goes, like, like we'll get ourselves a moment while we're paused up. Yeah, sure. So the other game going on right now is Polarity versus Power Rangers. Uh, and that just leaves, like, there's five teams per group, so no diggity are the ones not playing their first game here. Who are you actually thinking? To they're going to be watching this. Here? They're going to be watching this game as well. Oh, no diggity, yeah, definitely. Because they're playing Empire after this. Um, and who's going to come out on top? I mean, I, I'm thinking No Diggity has shown a lot of strength ever since they were created. That's that's a team to be reckoned with, but I think Empire are uh, going to come out on top. Yeah, you're believing in Empire? Yeah. I I like to see the game. Like, I like to see how Empire turn up today. Sure. But before I really start making my judgment. At least they've only got, like, like two games each day. So if things do go Dear wrong God. today, you've got, you got a chance to turn it around a little bit later on. That's Slardar weapon, though. It's just horrifying. Wait, what's, what's he got? He's got the... the what thing. is... Th I don't even know what it is. It's a TI... Uh, he, he's taken the head of that guy from um, Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> right. Yeah, you know, like Put him on a stick. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Just picked him up off the ground. I like it. The, un the undead man. Alright, so... No early bottle for Singh. Looks like he's actually picked up Wraith Band. As far as his Venom, Venom mid-built... Um, I mean, he's going to go into Aquila super early. It's just standard. I suppose you don't really care as well when you've got Guitar. Io on the field. Like, Io comes in. It's like, hey, guys, like, let me just have a little bit of life. Yeah. Have a little bit of mana. Uh, Bone 7 won't really require it after he hits level 6. It's interesting to see that he uh, didn't save money fully on the Wisp as well. He bought one support item and a Fairy Fire. It's, you know, spent a little bit of money. Mm -hmm. He's still gonna have his bottle super early. Just needs a hundred gold now. Really want to watch Maposhka during this during this game. Yep. Watch his movements, his rotations, because I want I want to know how effective this is really gonna be. Because it looks like for me, like Kaipi takes a little bit of time before they come online. Like the Night Stalker wants to get as many levels as he possibly can before he is able to hit like that that four minute mark. So night time will allow Bambo to actually do something more. Sing seems very passive in his lane. Like he goes up for Poison Sting first. I, and then gets initiated on. So there's no Gale, there's no oh big boy. controller. That hurts. This is just such a simple, simple movement, but they don't have enough damage at level 1, but they definitely like pop him down. He's bringing a salve out to himself on the courier now. Yeah, and he's planting a tree and eating it. And that, that's her two laning a lot, just the fact that she got the Shadow Strike and the harassment from the roll there. So good move by Miposhka, his first rotation. Oh, Sing's actually, like, he's so defensive in this lane until the salves arrived. Yeah, that means the queen is like free farming now. She's getting good denies. She's getting, sh she's gonna get every last hit unless she messes up on her oh, own. Oh, Bamboo's having a real trouble up on the top lane. He's back behind the tower, barely surviving. He does live. Well, we want to ask about Maposhka's rotation. Scandal, you are very deep here. Paralyzing cards are still available, and with the Observer on the other side of the tree line, like, yeah. Yeah, he, he has pretty good vision here. And with, yep, there goes your first stun, but hey, that blink range is just too good. Wants to be careful about how many hits he tanks there. He is going to use his salve here, so the region is kind of evened out. And in fact, 
Venno managed to hold on to his... Uh, he uh, he got the salve from the Witch Doctor. Mm -hmm. So, Witch Doctor just consumes his own stuff. How's that Bone... Because Bone Seven currently has a free lane. Like, no one else is down here on the bot lane at the moment. And that's primarily because Afterlife is already, like... He's gone jungle. He's three and a half levels in as a Beastmaster, two minutes into the game. You can farm... You can have... Actually, faster farm than a mid laner if you jungle Beastmaster. It's insane. If you do it correctly and if you get lucky with the spawns, you can be so, so farmed. It's kind of broken. Come with me denying everything he possibly can. He kind of wanted that, though. Means yeah. now he's got he's not going to have any extra bottle charges up his sleeve. But this CS, though, is, is looking really, really good for the Slark. Like, you've managed to get 16 for 5 up on him. Compared to your safe lane Slarder, like, Slarder's got 10 for 3. Like, the difference isn't that huge, but it's the fact that you're also getting Bone 7 complete solo levels. Like, he's going to get that level 11 up very early. Yeah, but I think it's I think it's wise by Empire, though. Even though you could put the Beastmaster on bottom and try to get something done down there, if Witch Doctor wants to shut you down, he's going to be successful in doing so. Your boars are not useful against the cask. You just cannot lane there, so just using the jungle, it's a good choice. I always find it interesting with these with these kind of builds. Like you've you've got uh, like Shadow Strike versus Poison, right? But he uh, Sing Sing actually prioritized the second point up in Poison Sting before going up for any kind of Plague Wards. And oh, nice double crush. The follow up though, like you're still before like night time, so Bambo is not really that scary. But maybe nope, too close towards the tier one tower. Maposhka can't really get himself a good initiation off. Well, after having played on a team with Bambo, I can tell you he is a big fan of the no wards Venomancer. I don't think that's going to happen. I think Sing Sing is going to go fully and yet yeah, we see it here. Yeah. I think he's going to go fully into the wards now. And the reason you go two points in Poison Sting is because the second point actually triples the damage output from Poison Sting compared to level 1. So it's extremely good value point. And a level 1 ward, you're not going to throw it down anyway. So this skill build kind of makes sense. Oh, Bambo. Light Strike Array is going to connect if this is going to work. So and it will though. not. In fact, he's trying to turn. It's still another 10 seconds until nighttime happens on Aposhka with just a small kick. He is chasing. Yeah, he, he's actually got this unless you can bowl yourself away. Yeah, she goes to the void. It's, it's one second until we oh, hit nighttime. nighttime. Like, it's... Uh, he, They're he, going to be zoned off this creep wave. Is he going to go for this? They should zone uh, him he, off. He, he, want, he wants to find King Ah. He's not going to get him, though. Yeah. And this wave is a long, long way past the tower. So, yeah, they, they, can't, they can't initiate or keep this going. Wow. That, that's a lot of pressure being added, though. I mean, this is what we look for when we talk about Bambo and how he's going to play offlane. Always aggressive. And with that Wisp, it really enables you to keep going harder. Mm -hmm. Bottom lane, we just see the Beastmaster farming up now. Damn. The, 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 the battle right now of gunk. Yep. Poison versus, versus poison. Yeah, it's a... Uh, <laughs> it's a uh, very deadly mid lane. Slowly, but deadly. I'm still waiting for the burst damage, because that's one thing which Sing doesn't really have over the Queen of Pain. When Queen hits level 6, I yeah. mean, Sing might even get dove immediately. Yep. If, uh, if he is a little bit too close, but he's going to back off, I think. Yeah. That's why I'm waiting here for the first blood. Yeah, the rotation with a smoke. Could it happen? Oh, possible. Bone 7 just hit his level 6, Ooh, however, so the they, they roar on him, but the Shadow Dance is available. Can he get it off in time with a kick follow-up? Yeah, he can. So Shadow Dance will happen with the Paralyzing Cast. Maybe now Empire's in a little bit too deep. And Able there it is, a Dark Pack kill. Bone 7 will find one. Life Strike Array only keeps back the Witch Doctor. It's going to be the Witch Doctor who actually finds that last hit. But they just did not have enough control and burst to kill off Bone 7 before he got the ulti. And what a timing for it. Like he just hit level 6. That backfired completely. And it's also a sad pack. Like that's the first gank for Beastmaster. He's been jungling all game long, had no impact for his team, and now, first rotation he makes, two of his teammates die. I mean, you don't want that to be <sighs> happening. Wow, they're going really low on that top lane. Now with face boots on, this uh, nice talker can be even more aggressive. But yeah, and, I, and I'm waiting for him like, to just commit it enough where he baits Ramses into attacking him, and then he just fairy fires it up. Yeah. So, well, so Ramses feels like he's got the kill. If he ever gets stunned, though, he's just yeah. That, that he's, up dead, then so. he's kind of screwed. <laughs> uh, the minus armor now available for Ramses, so he should be doing a lot better on his lane than before. Level six is a big upgrade for Slardar. Minus How ten armor. He? These support levels are a very long way behind. Oh, it's like, atrocious. Like yeah. actually, look, it's, it's a level level now three leading because she soaked up the creep wave, but it's a level two and a half Earth Spirit. There's yep. these times when you got to look to like like get the tomes to try and catch up. 
But well, even then, that's only going to get you like a very small part of the way. That's the thing. They've been going hard on the rotations, just going everywhere. And they had Beastmaster using the jungle, so they couldn't really go there and start, you know, stacking or trying to get something done there. Um, so they really had to get payout for it, and they did not. Not a single kill yet. Ooh, King Ang. <sighs> it's amazing how much damage that Void does. Oh, it's, yeah. it's a level 3 Void at night time, but it's the fact that at King Ah, you drop by half-life with one ability. 255 damage at uh, level 3 skill immediately at long cast range is really good. <laughs> it's really, really good. And they're trying to set up for more here. Uh -huh. He got stuck! Oh, oh Bambo! My God, Bambo! Help needs to come in, but come on, we can't do it. In fact, now he's gonna actually lose his own life for he it all. He got stuck in a creep wave. Oh, he face boy. booted in, and the face boots ended while he was inside the creep wave, and he had creep aggro, so they were not letting go of him. Oh, that's that's oh. A, that's a horrible way to end your first night time. One of those weird things that's gonna happen to you, maybe once in a hundred games or something, maybe once in a fifty if you're Bambo, because you know he makes more aggressive moves, but. I don't know. You gotta, you gotta feel so the face unlucky. Boots. Just the timing. Uh, that's really unfortunate. And th and there was nothing Kamami could have done. Like he he tethers himself in, but he can't oh, yeah. regenerate and heal him up. Like if there was relocate available, then maybe that would be an option. But no, that that was just an unfortunate series. Events. Mid lane now is being occupied completely by Venomancer. The level four wards are reached. Meanwhile, bottom rotation by Scandal here. Yeah, I think Scandal's actually completely okay with this. Like the tier one town takes a little bit more harassment, but if they can find a good kill, he wants to make a rotation with his ulti. That's for sure. He did reveal himself there though, so maybe he's just gonna run away now, because they know they know what he's up to. I love this witch doctor. He's just been hovering just around the side shop, moving up and down with with the slark, just in case something happens. He bounces in. With the paralyzing cast and give some space, but this is this is a lot of time wasted for the Queen of Pain. Yeah, and I th I feel like Hypie are pretty happy all across the map right now. They have sixty Bamboo actually getting farmed top. They get levels on everyone, and they're just trying to get Slark's items. And once once he has that, he can start moving. So this works great for for uh, Hypie. Meanwhile, though, Lina is recovering levels on mid as Queen is rotating. That's quite important. Lina needs level six badly. Okay, with the Paralyzing Cast, they can get this. The Cast will buy range for Bone 7 to get the leash off, and then just attack into the Beastmaster. Even Kawami's coming in for a little bit of extra help. The Roar's gonna go off, and now Scandal! Oh, Sonic oh, Wave! It, it hits 3, but the damage isn't critical, and Wish to instantly TP's out. Actually, no! Bone wow. 7 won't allow it! What? He denied it before the TP was gonna complete! But he, he would live! He would have! It's, it's true! That Okay, that's just the Bone 7 thing, I guess. <laughs> All right, I don't even know. Stat pad for denies. <laughs> he needs that one extra. I don't know. He actually missed the queen ulti on the witch doctor, else that would have been a clean kill. So a little bit sad for Scandal. He blinked too close there. The angle was not, not right for him. Uh, in the meantime, the mid lane just again oh, being top. pressured. Are they? They're going. They're trying, but the silence. Slardar cannot get. This is darkness. Uh, he triggers stick charges. Maposhka is so low. And he can't bolt her out. They're going to relocate up. Ramsey's also, like, he's armor toggling. Hence, he looks like he's dropping so low. The crush will come. Come with me. No more balls to slap. Yeah. And Empire will just retreat with both their heroes on insanely low life. Yeah, they're going to live, but, you know, just barely. And this top lane has really fallen out of their control in the last few minutes. The Wisp has made so much work up here. Just making sure. Making sure these graphs don't even really tell the tale of this game right now. Like I'm feeling like Kai P are about to hit this this perfect sweet spot when Bone Seven can start rotating, looking for ganks. They are, and like the the next nighttime phase is rapidly approaching. And Bamboo is like, he doesn't have like huge amounts of levels, but he's still in a really comfortable position to do work. And you do have the relocate over on Come With Me. So they've got more options across the map globally. Well, they have the Tome going for the Witch Doctor as well. So he's going to get his level 6 now. When the Tome comes out, he's actually level 6. Such a nice item for support. And Lina uses hers. Because Lina used hers too. Like she also cracked level 6. So Laguna Blade is now on the field for Empire. Yep. But who do you even try and burst down here? I mean, anyone that you can get the Roar on safely, you can always kill. But I think they're just making a move here saying that, hey, Bambo should be aggressive top again soon. So let's just be here and try and find him. Here's, a, here's a question a for bit. you. Midas pickup now comes out from Sing Sing. 
Right. What's the item transition? Because I can see Pipe being really effective here, but is he the mech builder? No, he will He will buy... He could buy a mech, but I think Veil and Aghanims are your two priority items. It really has to be. When that that, put, that puts a lot of pressure to, uh, pressure on come with me then to get those, like the mech and everything else. Maybe you don't really need it because you've got Restoration as... The thing. thing about Empires, even though they have some AoE, I think they're going to try and kill one guy at a time so hard that I don't think the mech is needed to rush. They can still go for it on, on Wispia, eventually. Because just the Veil and Aghanim's effects, when you have those two items on Venomancer, you just straight up win the team fights for your team on your own. Mm -hmm. And that's why he goes for Midas, by the way, to get the early levels. So he gets level 11 quickly, level 16 quickly, and from there you just you just play your game as a snake. Nighttime face, bamboo. We basically go onto his camera. This is this is the hunt time. Yep. That's when Nightstalker just wants to murder absolutely everybody. Yeah. And who's he like? Maposhka's the only one which is kind of in the neighborhood to to fight. Also, want to point out too, like I don't I don't remember the last time I saw either of these teams scan. Uh, they have not scanned yet. So I think they're just waiting, you know, I don't know. Waiting for you don't a have to wait with a scan. Like the, the cooldown's pretty low. Yeah, it's Does Bamboo see Ma... He doesn't see Maposhka. Maposhka's actually... Now they do. Oh, they sitting on each the... other. Yeah. Massacre, Massacre actually walked down too far. Is that, is that exactly... Is that how you say his name? How would you say it? Mas Ma Massacre actually looks pretty... Like, Massacre is... Yeah. It sounds pretty right. I don't know. We'll, we'll go with it. Masakari. I mean, I assume he's just inspired by Japanese, in which case Masaka is, uh, you know, it's something being Mas impossible. Masakari? Well, Masaka is something being impossible, so I would say I'm just going to go with Masakari. They're going for Roshan here. 13 minute Rosh. It's happening. If you have Slardar, why not? Yeah. That's what I'm going to say. I mean, there's no reason not to take the free Aegis. The enemy team is not going to be aware of what you're doing. Negative seven on the armor, easy to work through, and Kaipi on pushing the top lane hard enough to actually get a revenge. First scan of the game being used here, yeah, and uh, that's a dire scan. You are correct. Trying to predict the gank on top. They're correct that they're moving up there, just not exactly there. Well, there she blows. Are you going to see more like uh, put it to the hands of the slaughter, allowing him to be a little bit more aggressive? Yes. Bow 7 also wants to make a play for the mid. He's got the Shadow Blade up and running. Support's moving over from Sing Sing, and in fact, Bone 7 He's really uncertain about this. He may have actually expected... Uh, they just can't kill. Yeah. That's the thing. He's just going to blink back. There's no lockdown. But he is going to force the queen to jump away at least. There's nothing to really be scared of as Slark here. Um, but there's going to be a lot of pressure onto towers within these next few minutes. And Kaipi need to realize that they can take the top tower right now. As soon as the pressure comes to the bottom. Need to be quick. And yeah, everyone is moving there. Yeah. Move it in, take the tower, move on to the next objective. This We're going to see when we see the first team fight. That's going to be interesting because in a 5-on-5, five five, I feel that it could go either way. Kaipi obviously want a big fight that covers a massive area. Yep. Just they have Slark and Night Stalker. They want to run in, take very, you know, spread out skirmishes. Whereas Empire have the chain stun. They have the chain stun and the damage to just take the team fight. So. But em Empire are unobliging. Like, this mm -hmm. tier 1 tower is going to be taken out by the Slark on the top lane, but Empire are ready to go. Like, this tier 1 tower on bottom lane is very, very low. 310 to its name. Mm -hmm. And Kaipi have the choice now. Like, they could try and defend, but at the same time, they're not in any kind of position. If they TP in, it's going to be too late. So, it's a straight tier 1 for tier 1 and dodge straight. Yeah, and they should be... Well, Actually, they more? might keep going here as they have the Necrobook and they have Beastmaster. They might feel that they are going to push faster, which is correct. They're just behind a little bit, but they are going to push faster once they start here. Hmm. We'll see. They might. I, I think they're taking the tower a lot faster. There's fortification. It's, it's going to be at the same time, just because that fortification for the Radiant side yep. kicks in. So yeah, both teams are happy just to trade off their, their safe lane tier 2s. Yep. This only puts Kaipi one tower ahead, and that's because they took out that tier 1 tower. You can thank the uh, Venomans for that. Nia's going to go into the Aghanim Scepter build to start with. And speaking of items, this is a massive injection of gold to both teams. Taking two towers like this straight up, it just increases the amount of items that everyone gets to play with. Look at this offlane Beastmaster. He has level 2 Necrobook and 670 gold already. Mm -hmm. 16 minutes in, it's going to be such an early Necrobook. It's going to hurt a lot. Yeah. It's, it's kind of the dream for him, but... At the same time, I still want to see how Empire function if they get hit by a Nova. Mm -hmm. Like that's a. It's gonna be an Axe Rush Nova, so yeah. Yep. And it's, it's also I mean like because it's the uh, with the Midas as well. 
at, at the rate this game is going, like we got five kills in 16 minutes. At the rate this game is going, Sing Sing's gonna have his level level three Nova before a fight really actually starts. <laughs> I think I hope they are gonna fight a little bit, and uh, <laughs> you can hope. You can always. You may hope. not get your wishwagger. Yeah, I mean, I've had a long game today already, right? So let's bring on the two-hour game, boys! <laughs> Dude, <laughs> you actually get so much money for the late game creeps. I was talking to Fog about it later. He was like, dude, 70 gold for killing a range creep? Hey, you, you saw it, right? Like, yeah, you you saw the uh, over 1,000 gold per minute on that Ember Spirit. Yeah, that was, and he was even farming. Um, big creeps that did not give as much gold. The uh, all the range creeps just gave forty for him, whereas the entire radiant they got seventy gold per range creep. I like Crazy. I like this item over on a slark, but it's kind of funny because he's only got one point up in essence shift, but he gets the echo saber. Oh, the relocate him after yeah. life. He's gonna trigger off the necro book. The rest of his team's too far away, and that's a very quick committal of of the witch oh, doctor death so They wanted that money. kill and then move on to the next one. The TP out from Lena. If Bamboo spots this, yes he will. This is gonna make it too far. Two kills and two Necrobook units as well killed off. That's 150 gold per Necro unit. So much money just being injected here. And Kaipi, they're they're taking control of the map right now. That should look really good for their item progression. They uh, are. You, uh, you talked about the injection of money, and we looked at it towards Team Empire with the Necrobooks. Sure. But this mech is getting a lot closer. Oh, yeah. You've got the double Agadem Scepters currently being built up. So Bambo is now 2k away from his. Uh, Sing Sing is 1500 away from his. Yep, it, it's it's going to be scary. I think the team that has a Slardar with Blink and Armlet, they need to be the ones to make stuff happen. You don't want to be a split-pushing Slardar taking down Tier 1 Towers. Yep. So the fact that they lost two heroes there, it kills his momentum. He needs to play this game right now as a split-pushing, but when they're all alive, he wants to fight. He definitely wants to. He has Ar uh, Aegis as well. No reason to be uh, afraid of the fight. Okay, so top tower is taken out by Slardar. Echo Saber Shadow Blade <laughs> on the... Uh, oh, Slark pouncing in. Yeah, goes after Afterlife. He roars and just push back Bone 7. And then with a Blink Crush, they know exactly where he is. Obviously, you follow the Puff of Smoke. And Bone 7, with a silence, he can't get himself out. Ashley buys up the Skull Basher recipe before death. And Line Strike away from King R. He scouts out coming in the trees. Dude. He's actually got now a Tether available, but there's no units for him to really work with. And the Earth Spirit will find the kill, even though there was the help from the Laguna Blade. He should just try for EGM TP. Dude, I played Wisp for the first time in maybe six months or so today, and I did my first attempt of EGMTP, nailed it. <laughs> Not even kidding. It's it's surprisingly easy. Just click right when you're at three, and you're fine. He should have tried for it. But I see more and more people actually go, uh, go ahead and do it. So it's good. Anyway, uh -oh. two for, kills. For, for this Wisp, with his death, he's being pushed back now. He was actually quite close to picking up the mech. Now he's... Like yeah, I lost 200 gold. Yeah, 250. So and this slows this slows things up. But Empire still have the like the other issue. Like, how do you push into Kai P? Like, when you try and force a tower. Like, maybe this is also another one of those reasons why like the five man from Empire might be really good. But if the plague wards like are already established and you try and run yourself in, mm -hmm. like you're gonna get slowed up time and time again. Yeah, it, it's difficult, but. The more dangerous thing is going to be what you talked about more earlier, just the Venomancer's ulti itself. Like, never mind the Plague Wards, he almost has his entire Aghanims now. Because yep. life has been very good for Sing Sing. He's just been farming. There's been nothing really stopping him. 20 minutes of just rising away, and uh, yeah, he finally has all the components. 50 gold away. Smoke Maneuver by Bambo as well as uh, Witch Doctor. As they're trying to make the most out of this uh, fresh night time. And who can they find? Scandal. Oh, he's underneath the Radiant Observer Ward. And you see Bambo, he wants to oh. loop in around the back. Maposhka as well. He's going to break the, oh, break the smoke, target. but this is nighttime. So he doesn't actually see what's happening, allowing Bambo to do the complete wraparound into darkness. So Scandal doesn't see it coming. They'll silence him up. He'll use to buy himself one time to blink away. The relocate's on the way. The void will happen. But he had a haste room bottled up. Yep. A quick, quick runaway, and this gank does not work. Wow, I'm surprised they didn't go on the ES there, because they knew they had so much time to check the inventory, know he has a Yules and a Haste, but yeah, they don't really have any good follow-up. Here goes the Blink, though. Angry Ramses. Uh, this, he, he's too far away. Uh, the Plague Lords keep out. you back as well. Yep. And, you, and you notice too, Kaipi had no intention of fighting. Like the, like the second that initial gank didn't work, Bone 7 TP to the top lane and just started his farm again. Yeah, he just gets out. 
I kind of wish that Ramses would um, go ahead and do what what we see QO do as well when he plays Slaughter. Just go for a pretty early heart. But he's going to go into BKB first here. Completely understandable against this team. Silence from Night Stalker. That is no fun, no fun thing to deal with at all. Missed chance and 8 seconds of not stunning. Empire just pinged out the Aghanims over on Sing. Yep. So they're, they're going to be very much aware of this. So they just start attacking up the tower with the Necro books. I mean, they could get a tower here with no trade if they uh, play their cards right. If, if these Necro books actually die, however, like it's still... It is a ton of gold. It's, it's, it's a ton of gold. It's also the fact that now Kai P potentially could engage. Yeah. You could have a really bad team fight when... When Beastmaster doesn't have his Necro book up, he's effectively almost not even a hero right now. Sure, you have the roar, but oh. okay. he doesn't have any damage. I was actually wondering about this from Bone Seven because, like, buying up the Basher recipe and like, going directly into Basher didn't make as much sense to me. Uh, and he actually decides to complete the Silver Edge while leaving the recipe inside uh, his stash. Yeah, that's what almost everyone is doing now as well. If you buy the um, Shadow Blade plus one item, maybe Shadow Blade into Sanjasha, or in this case, Shadow Blade into Echo Saber, and then from there just upgrade to Silver Edge. Mm. It's so good. It's just like economy-wise, Ramsey's real trouble, but. With that armor turn on, he gets more than enough life to survive Bone 7's attack. I mean, we see a lot of pokes, but none of the teams are really committing fully. They're just kind the of going... Scandal and might be able to. Like, come with me. He he's, he's got 10 stick charges available, so when Scandal goes for initial Scream, he can repair a large portion of that damage. Yeah. But he, ha he has to basically commit Scream, it's Sting, like a, and Sonic Wave to get the kill. from it. And there goes the pop as well. Yep. One charges, tether over, Scandal's going to Yule Scepter, and then just get the hell out. Yeah, well, he did force the Wisp back at least, but that's that's a lot of mana for, committed. For a Sonic Wave? I suppose it's Snag and him's upgrade, right? So Yeah, yeah. I mean, he has the, the cooldown is low, but he's just investing so much time Oh, this is this. nice. Bamboo just got a fresh Aghanim Scepter. There's nowhere to blink and hide for Scandal. Look at Bamboo. He's actually waiting for the initiation to come right. and wait way. for Scandal to blink back out. So there goes the Gale, and he blinks over into the tree lines. The Paralyzing Cask will follow him. He uh. does not have a TP available, and they relocate directly on top of the Queen of Pain. Scandal will go down. Scandal is dead, and there's a massive pickoff, and it's gonna spell a Tier 1 tower down here as well. The Tier 1 mid does go down, but it was really low HP anyway. So that's not really a fair trade. Especially after losing your mid like this. Yeah. But they are trying to mobilize for a mid push quickly here. They have a DD rune on Slardar as well. And anyone who defends this carelessly is uh, in danger. Sing Sing. Also, they just play oh. Gordon up. Blink, Crush. Come with me still there, so he'll tether over. The kick is right on top of Sing Sing. They need to negate more of this damage, but they can't do enough of the no work. Ulti. And now Bambo rotates over. Maposhka is probably the easiest one for them to kill off, so they'll take care of him first. The extra control, the Paralyzing Cast, they're able to get that. There's also a small rotation coming from Dear the Slark. God. He's coming in from behind the Slaughter. Already with a double kill. Bambo needs help. He's just standing his ground. Ramsey's keep the armor toggle going, but in comes Bone 7. They oh. see him, however. Thanks to that Dire Sentry Wars, the Yule Scepter up buys more space. Bone 7 tries to break free and move with Bambo to find a kill. They'll see Ramsey's TP out at the very last moment. Dude, King R is so clutch. That Yule Scepter was great. Just having a Sentry down in time. He knows the Slark is going to come around and gets the Yule Scepter before the Pounce lands. King R is a player, dude. Uh, I'm a massive fan. Great fight there. Great aggression as well from Ramses. Just dives in, no hesitation, and they know they have the chain stun. We talked about it earlier, but mm -hmm. look at Singh. He could not move, and the rear kite was still on cooldown, so no way to save him there. It was, a big, it was a big thing everyone has been talking about of, of Empire for the last week or maybe two. It's just their support synergy. Mm -hmm. like the way these guys play is just so next level. It's, it's kind of also very fitting that that was what Empire used to be really well known for. Uh, back with their old support combination. So yeah. it's nice they get a little bit more of a glimpse of this after the CIS shuffle. Yeah, because a lot of people are saying, well, following Empire now, you know, it doesn't actually feel like Empire anymore or whatever. Yeah. Like, but... You know, I, I'm a big fan of individual players. I'm I'm not following a team just for the team itself. I, I like the players, and I'll tell you what, Empire has some great ones. Scandal, I'm really happy to see him play again as well. That is, he is one tryhard dude. He actually is one of the few players that has more hours logged than me as well. He has thirteen and a half thousand hours on his main account, and I know he has more than one account. <laughs> Where did he actually go? What did he do while he was away? 
Uh, probably still played. I just, mean, just pop, 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 I, pop. I was thinking that as well, and I think he just spammed games. Um, but yeah, he, he's he's always tryharding. Right. Crush a little bit off target. Simple pounce away. Mm -hmm. Bone Seven Ashley has the Basher with the Echo Saber. This is actually like like the combination is still so damn good for the Slark. Like you you steal the essence really quickly. You got the extra chance for the Bash as well. Yeah. Once he gets a Bistle Blade, they'll have a better lockdown against that Queen of Pain. It is really nice. Those double hits are really, really dangerous when it comes to just the potential of bashing when you go on someone immediately. And that's really when it hurts, because maybe they don't get the Yule Scepter off. There's two heroes that need to get that. Lena and the Queen. Look at this vision. I, Bone Seven is actually the first one to run in with a smoke gank, and now, oh, well, the roar will happen. But Bamboo rotates in through the side. The relocate coming in. The powers and cards can Death Ward combination. You actually have King R, oh however. You'll cancel off the Death Ward, but the damage may already be done. Empire of Lost 2, and Ramsey's being hunted down. The Courier, well, actually, no. that has a Ring of Health on it as well. Unfortunately, Donkeys are also being put on the menu. Ramsey's BKB will wear off, and now one second time, he makes it to the tree line. Yes, Blinks blink. over, but again, Bambo, he's reading the play so well. They'll dive underneath the tier 3 tower. Wait it out. There's your pounce. You burn the Aegis of the Immortal. Yeah. The Kai P, they'll back out. There is no roar. And there's no way they can re-initiate or punish this, because the Slark now has stolen some stats. You don't want to go into this. You burn the roar. I mean, there, there's no way you can punish, so you just got demolished by the cask. Yep. Really, the Witch Doctor just carried that fight. Single-handedly destroyed the Queen of Pain. I mean, the Veno ulti also did work, but the fight was over so quickly they didn't have time to uh, actually shine. Sing Sing trying to use Midas and gets the TP off instead. No one saw it. It's cool. <laughs> it's fine. TP scores are 50 gold now. I mean, he can he can buy a million. It's of just them. the one minute cooldown. Yeah. He had to go back to base anyway. Oh, yeah. hello bottom lane. Ramses as well as uh, Bone Seven, playing around. Yeah, but that's just good for Slark because he can always back up and, you know, quickly heal. Whereas the Slardar, sure, you have armlets, you have some tankiness, but you take one little fight like this, you're low HP. You're going to stay low HP for a very long time. Bone 7 still needs a way to get a little bit more mana up your sleeve. Like, that's that's the only other thing. Mm. Downside for the Slark. It is, it is. But he'll be fine. How do you even initiate if you're Empire at the moment? Like you got you got the main issue of an Aghanim's gem Night Stalker during nighttime. Like you cannot like have they actually even got a single they haven't got a single war I oh don't know they do. It's it's around Roshan. They got an observer and a sentry around Roshan. Yep. At all other times they rely on Afterlife's Hawk. Uh, they they have one word as well on the top part of the map. Is it? Okay. Yeah, it's about to run out in a while. Okay. But there I mean it's a it's a battle for vision, right? And that's what this game comes down to, because whoever gets the better initiation is gonna, is gonna probably win. Kaipi wanna just take these in and out kind of fights, whereas Empire, they just want the big team fight to happen. They're praying for it. It's Bambo trying to look for the rotation. Yep. And uh, uh, he'll seven. he'll see afterlife for a very quick moment. Oh, uh, Bone Seven, he'll track down Ramsey. That's probably the easier chance to get a kill. And he gets the early bash as well. Ramsey's will crush off, but the Death Ward, the damage is enough. And if King R wants to come in, he's going to take considerable damage. Same for Scandal. Where is that cask again? Now bounced out, keeping Afterlife back. But he's tricking his Necro books. But the other cask, it just keeps hitting the Beastmaster. Last Strike Array won't buy it on space. And Empire will lose too. And this happens at the same time. Like, there's five heroes up. Sing is pushing mid. So they can attack into the top tier 3 tower. No buyback on Beastmaster. Man, KPO are playing so well, and I feel like every single fight, the Necrobooks are actually not doing anything but dying. I haven't seen the Necrobooks... I mean, sure, some little bit of tower pushing or helping out with Roshan DPS, but I haven't seen the Necrobooks ever dominate anyone in well, this game. It's funny, because normally the domination you see with that is the blink into roar into yes. Necrobook trigger, and you and you get solo pickoffs, but... They, they have no vision. They can't. They can't see these kind of things well, to make it happen. They've really just been giving so much gold as well. Because I, I think he's tied with like five pairs of necrobooks, and that adds up. That's a lot of money to the enemy team. Uh, and all that money is just gonna start to add up more and more. Like Bone Seven is staring down the barrel of finishing up his guardy fairly soon. Oh yeah, he will have it extremely soon. He he has the money for it right now. He can always disassemble the Silver's Edge. So he has the scouty completed whenever he wants to. There's your your uh, blink veil and ags over on the Venomancer. Sing has actually now hit the point where once he actually has his level 16, he does everything he needs to do. Blink veil Nova. He could then die a very milky man. You know, <laughs> a very milky man. You know what the best next item for him is? What is what's the next item? Octarine core. <laughs> 
It, I'm not kidding. That I is, hear it's really good on a Bristleback as well. It, it is pretty good <laughs> on a Bristleback, but it would destroy the enemy team. You get so much life from your ulti, and the lower cooldown, 45 second cooldown on Poison Nova, uh -huh. it is no joke. So uh, I think he could easily go for that now, just tank up a lot as well. I wonder if he's got the time, because we still have to think about the end game. Like, what happens when Kaipi tries to go high ground mm -hmm. if they haven't got a pick over on Empire? Like, who has the advantage then? Well, I think Kaipi are quite confidently going to be able to push. They have the Wisp to save anyone who gets initiated upon. And Venomancer is going to be tanky, so is Lark. Do they do enough damage later to the rack? So I'm actually thinking now, like, as I say that, like, it doesn't make any sense for Kaipi to actually push high ground if they don't get a pick on Empire to They're start with. So does Empire then just dodge, or do they oblige with the team fight? Well, in that scenario, it would just end up with Kaipi dominating the map and well, out farming. The Hawk. Uh, Bamboo knows he's being watched. He has to jam, of course. Gotta nuke down the Hawk there. Trying to get an initiation. Beastmaster. Uh, look at mid. Bone Seven's attacking the T3 tower. They have to come back. Yeah, they do. They need to react somehow. And that's when Night Stalker wants to go in. <sighs> that's no vision. Yeah. He has the Aghanims. He could find the Beastmaster still. Well, he blinks very far away. They're I'll not see Afterlife, but yeah, they won't get either. That's a five man TP away, though. And that's just. You know, more control of the map being asserted. As the Slark now doesn't even have to rejoin his team, he can just back off, keep firing more of the map. They're getting more net worth right now, just accelerating in their lead. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, if we look at the graphs, that's really what we see as well the story being told by the graph. Everything is going up, 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 up. Yeah. He, in fact, never disassembled the Silver Sedge. He has an entire Scotty and the Silver Sedge still. How much how much do you want to kill this courier right now? <laughs> that would be some value. That's a that's a full lotus orb oh, no. coming up from Bambo as well. And that's a that's a bad game for Empire to be countered by a Lotus Orb. And so many things. That's the rest, yeah, that's the rest of the Scotty as well for the Slark. <laughs> I mean there's so many things that can go wrong. He can purge off the amplified damage and the silence. That's two big things. And he can also just return so many of these stuff. The smoke ganking, they haven't triggered darkness yet. Yeah. So the vision is still okay. Now they're going to do it. So now they get their extra vision. Mm -hmm. But e Empire is red. It's like you look at their movements back. Yeah, everyone's TPing. Everyone's going. It's like oh, they scanned it. All are missing on the map. Something is wrong. They uh, they actually landed a scan. That's uh, like the second scan that we see this game. In uh, yeah. I, I kind of wish like we they had more of like 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 kind of like a ping ping thing. Like your command and conquer style. <laughs> oh, afterlife. That's problematic. And he actually gets bashed, attempting to TP out. The Necrobooks are down, but the Death Ward, yep. well, helps ensure the kill. The Necrobooks are now going to be pulled back, so at least they don't feed the money. Yeah, that's always something. <laughs> always something. But Stark still has ulti, and this is looking like they're going to push a tower. But yeah, we, we could have seen like 18 more scans in this game, actually, by, by this time. It's kind of mm -hmm. funny. Not really, but almost. <laughs> like, at least 10 more scans. Nice Stalker, just walking in aggressively here, trying to scout again. Are they gonna? What's that they gonna try and force the tower? Oh, they you should. know how he said they weren't feeding the Necro books. Well, there goes the melee one. Oh, well. T Two hundred gold to the Slark's uh, bank account to try and pick up that that abyssal. I mean, at this point, he's just so fat already. I don't know. They need to get something done with a Slardar right now. Oh, point seven. Ramsey's blink forward. He can't get the crush off. And now the counter initiation. Yeah, Sing okay. Sing. That Nova actually didn't hit Ramsey. Somehow it didn't hit him. It the King like R is. Yeah. It, it should have actually connected. It looked really close, but he's so fast he ran away from it. You know, it takes a while for no Poison Nova to travel out. It works like the like the like the rework Tide Ravage, right? Like it goes. Boop, 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 exactly. Boop. Exactly. It it doesn't immediately apply in the entire area. And uh, oh, it's, it's, it's still the end, end result the copy we're looking for. You take out a tier 2 tower, you get a pick on another hero that removes all out of towns for Team Empire, and Roshan's up in 10 seconds. And it's no cooldown. Poison Nova is not a skill that you should be careful about. Every single time there's a fight, you want to try and get it on. Of course, if you can get multiple heroes, that's fine, but hey, what? Oh, they're relocating. Uh, they're doing it just to push out the top lane. Yeah. And now Sing sense. Sing uh, scouts out the fact that Roshan is up. Okay, this Slaughter almost has his uh, heart. He's trying to finish it up for Phoenix fight here. He has 200 gold needed. He will get it, but uh, I don't know. This is looking like Empire might... They might just be one or two fights away here from losing all control of this game and just just falling out. On the Brian's side, they, just, they still have plenty of games to play in this qualifier, but... Oh, they do. Like, yeah. knowing there's only, like, one team... Like, there's two teams that come out from each of the groups... Mm -hmm. 
but it's one team only from each region that qualifies all the way in. So they need to have like a really good performance across this whole qualifier. Yep, it is tough. Oh, Bambo. Oh. There's the Lotus Orb, tries to protect himself for the moment. The Death War gets cancelled pretty damn quickly, and now the Venomance Rolly. This one will hit over on four heroes with all the damage. They're going to start ticking down. The Magnetize will slow down this fight a lot, but they're all just continuously oh, the ticking. Nova. The Beastmaster even still dies back at base. It's a triple kill for Sing Sing. All he had to Ultra. do was blink in and hit R. The Dude. Slaughter dying is the last one. <laughs> you know, Slaughter actually had Maledict and Poison Nova on him. Oh. That's never a fun thing. <laughs> Disaster truly struck there. Oh, uh, the beautiful Sing Venno. Yeah, he plays that snake. He's got a BKB now as well. No fun is allowed. He's just gonna say, hey, I will not die in these fights. You gotta feel so sorry for Team Empire at that point there, because, like, what do you do? You want to initiate in. Their lineup, like, Slana has to blink forward. Beastmaster has to blink forward to Roar and Necrobog. The Queen of Pain, like, that was the funniest thing. Scandal only survived because he sat up on the top of the stairwell going, Yeah. You guys have gone in. You almost have to bait the Nova out from Sing Sing before you can fight. But that wasn't possible. Well... It is, it is really, really hard. They try to go for once here, and it's a game of vision where Kaipi are right now just winning. I mean, having the Aghanim's Night Stalker controls the game so much for him. And even the Night Vision on the Slark helps a lot. The Venom Wards just being everywhere, being such a nuisance. You can't make wraparounds unless you're smoked, and you can't smoke that often. Mm -hmm. And now a full Basher upgrade for um, Slark. Yeah. This all is complete. Th this, this is when Scandal can actually die. Like, there's no Yules to dispel any kind of, like, silence of, of the Night Stalker. It's just, like, Bone 7 jump in, take out one guaranteed. Yeah. And uh, you've you got to remember, there's still the Aegis Immortal, which they put on the Night Stalker of all people. Yeah. They don't have good stuff to dislodge this Lark as well. I mean, they have some AoE stun that they can throw, the Lina stun and so on, but they, they can't actually swap someone away or whatever. Like, when he locks onto you, you're probably dead. Here he comes again. Yep. And this is their high ground push. I mean, they don't need to do this more than this. I don't think they're going to... Well, they could commit here, but they could also just back up and keep controlling the game. This is the only issue that goes. Like, the fact that Ramsey's is... He's not even there. Yeah. Like, all of this is just, like, range kind of damage. Bone 7. Uh, Lion Striker raised. There's no abilities being directly cast on him. Hence, that, uh, that Lotus Orb isn't really, re like, returning anything. Yeah, but he's tanking so much. Look at the Wisp Heal. Oh, now Blink Crush, but Lotus Orb is up. He actually got a leash over on Ramsey's, oh. allowing for a small attack. The Nova's out from Sing Sing. Yeah, just that Poison Nova alone is going to force him back to Fountain. Hurts so much. It wasn't even in combination with Vale. Vale was already triggered before he jumped in for that. Yeah. So it was, on, it was still on cooldown. But yeah, he has to sit back at base. Heal back up. So the Tier 3 tower is gone. This is like, and this is where my concern was. Like, until you get a pick, Kai P can't instantly just like get themselves a rank. It is a very, very slow process. And yeah, they don't really push high ground that well, but they do control the entire map, and they have good late game. Uh, and their team fight is superior right now mm -hmm. because of Venomancer. There is a danger that. The game keeps going for long enough that oh, are we gonna see? After life, oh. he's really nice and quick good, on that one. Good blink. There's a chance that if they go late enough, that Venomancer isn't alone going to be able to secure the team fight anymore, and then they could be looking at danger. But I think for now, they could just do whatever they want on KP. Oh, we hit the daytime, and instantly Bamboo starts to glisten in the sun, so he triggers darkness. Well, he's found Scandal. Yeah, he he, he needs some help. Like, they wait for a relocate, he's maybe waiting, up on the hillside. Yeah, he's waiting for a Slark to go in there. Oh, we'll he's wait. coming. Okay. The Abyssal Blade, that's going to lead. Well, that's a nice BKB for Queen of Pain, but that doesn't help you up against the Abyssal Blade, gank. Condolences. Uh, say goodbye to the Witch Doctor at the same time. Looks like Kamwami attempted to relocate save on him. Yeah, and uh, that failed a little bit. He's now running in. He might actually wow. die before. Okay. I don't know what you're doing, come with me. Uh, he's trying to keep them All there right. to fight, so then they're able to get the revenge. That, that's, that's what I'm going to go All with, right. at least. King R's going to go down, and Bone 7 picks himself up another double kill. I guess that works. I actually think that Empire are not too unhappy. They just got two kills for a team at least. I mean, they're so far behind that trading two for two there after a queen dies at least, that's sort of fine. Now there's just the downside that, you know, Slark is getting completely out of control. The amount of farm, the amount of stats he steals.
I'm also keeping my eyes on Sing Sing. Sing Sing actually needed oh, yeah. the Octarine. He went for a BKB instead. Mm -hmm. um, probably more than likely just to break free of the silence. Oh, yeah, he's just securing instead. the team fights even more. He knows his, yep. his role oh, is to slot. win fights. Lotus Orb protection again. Bambo is trying to save his life here, but okay, now they really don't have enough damage, do they? Oh, but they, they uh, blink. Can they go for the crush? Bambo. They just keep running. So awkward, you know, he was outside the true side. And he starts running fast again, so Slardar can't catch him. Mm. Slark is really a hard hero to deal with in this current patch, and he's had such a good game. Only died once. Bone 7, sneaking around, going for the Abyssal Plate again. Well, they got a target, which is the Queen of Pain in mid, but... Uh, he's just gonna go for the creeps. Most of them die before, uh, by the timer, though. And here we go, the high ground push without a pickoff before, it is kind of hard for him to get the high ground push. But they could still try with the Slark if they want to, Silver's Edge. Now the Necrobrooks are down. Uh, he's kind of back. An Empire wait. <laughs> they actually scan out as well, like they're trying to work out like if Kaipi is just sitting on this hillside waiting to gank them. Yeah. I mean, they just can't feel safe <laughs> anywhere right now. Did you actually see the name of, the, of his wards? Yeah, that's that sounds like something. Uh, that's 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 a, that's that's Sing Sing, well, like. Yep. He actually named his words. Beautiful. All right then. Beautiful. Now we get to highlight the the beauty that is Sing Sing. I mean, that's what playing Venomancer is about. That's that's what everyone knows it as. Ven well, yeah. Venomancer and Viper. Hello. Got to get on your terminology. Well, all right. He's going for the upgraded orchid, most likely, on uh, butterfly or uh, yeah. maybe that or butterfly. But butterfly yeah. would be great against starter, so I guess it could be that. Yeah, that that's why I was like, I, I look to you for guidance on that one. Like, what is better? He could go for either. Honestly, I mean, upgraded orchid is insanely good late game, but I think on Slark in particular, butterfly is probably just better. And there's no way but that this starter ever gets MKV. In this game, I don't think so. Yeah, it's so e even if he wants to, he'll never, he'll never oh, get the money for it. Right play. now, he wants this the AC. The make or break. Oh, then there's play. no darkness either. So it's during Ooh. the daytime. They jump in the double cross. The Sonic Wave as well. Bamboo Komi comes in looking for the save, and will it be enough? Bamboo still surviving with the help of Lotus Orb. Sing Sing's ulti also doing some work, but not really enough until Bone Seven can now come back into the fight. Focus on King R on the back lines. They're Thank bringing him down though. They're going for the Wisp as well, trying to chase him, but you know. Tether and TP, Tether and TP, Ramses can't get the Whoa. crush in time. Uh, it's just this, this annoying Venel. Bone Seven can go back in in two seconds time. He's got a Bissell Blade up, and it's mainly the Silver Edge, which will allow him to solo oh. up the Slaughter. So you hit him, you wait it out. He hits the Lord. Abyssal Blade, he misses the Tether, but uh, it doesn't really matter. He's got 24 stolen essence. Dear God, it hits hard. And that is really, as he said, the Abyssal Blade, the low cooldown on it, he can just go again here. He used it in the team fight, gets out of the fight, and then has it again for a fi fast pickoff. People are not used to this. Like, this is a big shift in in how the Abyssal Blade plays out. The yeah. upside for Empire is they did, hold on, belly to the, they did hold on to that gem. Well, who's going to fight him? He's just like, going for it. Like, he, he is the complete boss right now. Like, you Shadow Strike, brilliant. Sonic Wave, you can kick him. He doesn't give a crap. He'll go Invis. He's still got Shadow Dance available. You TP Beastmaster Ford. He can actually turn on the scandal if he wants to. While he still holds on to the like the large amount of stolen essence, like why should he fear anything? Uh, yeah, I agree. He doesn't need to fear anything. I still think he should have gone for a range track though, because Melrax oh, yeah, to me true. was just such a, <laughs> it's just a statement that I'm coming here to destroy the racks before I back <laughs> alone against everyone, and that's just you know uh, I <laughs> was like waiting for him to show me how he's gonna do that, but. In the end, he's just hitting the wrong racks. Maybe it's also just one of those zero bucks given kind of moment. Like, you're 10,000 net yeah. worth ahead of the slaughter. I, you're going to be feeling so comfortable in this game. Dude. And what does he actually drop now? Like, is it even worth dropping the Echo Saber or just oh, yeah. like getting, like, just buying up the Moon Shard at this point and then thinking about another item later on? You can get the Moon Shard first, actually. Because uh, the Echo Saber is still high value, but it's not as good as any like true gear cap item. Mm -hmm. So I think he should get the Moonshard first. Maybe even travels, depends on how the game develops. But I don't think he needs travels. He's so fast to run across the map anyway. And they have a whisper. Ulti from Bambo. They see the Hawk. 
They see the Observer Ward. And they also saw... Uh, Mapashka. Yep. Mapashka TPing out, so they have full control now of this Roche Pit. Say hello to Bloodthorn. Up on the Queen of Pain now. Mm -hmm. God, they... <laughs> Bloodthorn is a strong item. It does help their pick off, but they don't have great right click on their team. Apart from the Slardar and his Minus Armor, like, they need the Slardar to go on the guy who's Minus Armored. If he gets the Amplify, then... Mm. Oh, sorry, the Bloodthorn. Then it can work. Okay, what's gonna happen here? Scouting by Sexy Bambo. Yeah, he just sees everything. I like how he went back to being Sexy Bambo again. Not just Bambo. Well, he is a sexy beast. Blink, crush, they go on. They go over on Bone 7. Oh. Beastmars is kept out of this, however, by Bambo. And then with the Yule Scepter up, they wait a little bit longer. King R is still gonna end up dying, but it's a one for one trade off with the Witch Doctor being that major trade. But then Sing Sing, he coats them all with the ultimate. The relocate pulling Bambo out just a little bit further here. But the Queen of Pain, she's actually going to work. Moving over towards Bambo, he should be ticking out. The Magnetize has done work, but now how many kills does Sing Sing get? Maposhka, is he gonna be. Armless toggle through it, Ramses, live! He's armless toggling. Wow. Does he. Does he yeah, ah. He's gonna live. He's gonna live. Actually, Scandal gets solo killed by Kamuthni. Wait, maybe? does he? Yeah, he, he does. does. Oh my god, that's a big Kamuthni solo kill right there. Wait, wait for Kamuthni to go for the last one. Wait, wait, wait. Courier, courier bait is coming for the gem. Oh. It picks up the gem and loses it straight away. All right, all right. And they're sending their own courier to come in and take it. Very good. <laughs> no kind of kill. Wow. After all of that, though, like you, you lose practically everybody. Practically everyone. Look at the experience change, though, at these two teams. Four for four, yes, but eleven and a half thousand experience. Yeah. Dear God. I just love how much damage the Sing Sing did during the fight, but the same amount is almost mm. done by both the Slaughter as well as the Queen of Pain. And the, the thing about Slaughter's damage is that is focused onto one guy after another, so that's not so easy to mitigate by heals or anything yep. like that. And I thought that fight was gonna go great for Kaipi with the start of it. Yeah. You know, keeping the enemies zoned out, they were going on the lean out, the dark pact on the roar, everything was looking great. But again, here we are, next Roshan being taken. That's really the first time too we haven't really felt the presence of the Witch Doctor during the fight. True. Like Paralyze and Cast has done a lot. The Death Ward, like, it's kind of done more of a zoning thing than anything else. He got destroyed there by the Queen of Pain. It, it was just a good initiation by Empire, really. The, or reinitiation, I should say. And this game could go either way, really. I mean, sure, KP are ahead by a lot. By Empire, they're showing signs of life in these fights. They're really executing well, and they're not that far behind in farm, actually. Their net worth is not terrible. But you, you, you start to see the dive back down. Mm -hmm. Like 12, 13k, you're okay with this. Like, you were 20,000 behind, practically, in golden experience. And won. And both are down to 13k. Yeah, you won the team fight when you were that far behind, so... If you now got a little bit of an injection of gold, you get the cheese and ages going, you know, it's, what it's, could happen? It's still the issue, too, that Kaipi need to have themselves a good fight before they can take high ground. Because yeah. if they don't, then it's Sonic Wave, it's Axes, it's Kicks, it's Slaves, it's it's everything else you're looking at here. Like, you, you can't push, you can't force the push into the Empire high ground Right. Um, at this stage of the game now with the items that they've got. Uh, and this is why I think like this item on Sing Sing is going to be probably more one of the critical ones. The Hex. He, he sticks around with Bambo, they get the Vision, then it's Blink into Hex, you get the Initiation, you find the one pick off, and then you make it a 5v4. Yeah, that's what they really lack. They haven't had good Disables on their team, so this adds up more. The Abyssal and the Hex, this is their main Disables, actually. So just relying on the itemization here. Of course, they had the beautiful Cask before, but the later the game goes, the more unlikely it's going to be that it happens. So, mm -hmm. it's a smart itemization, but if we look to items, look at Empire. They have the Vlads and the Necronaut book on Beastmaster with his RS. It carries very well into late game, and they just click really hard. The right clicks are to be feared. You know, I, I was thinking, like, with Bone 7, I, he can go all out brawler. That's why I was thinking more like Moonshark kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But the fact he picks up BTs, yep. like, it almost influences to think that Kaipi are like, okay, guys, we need to keep the split push going. We need to keep those side lanes out. True. And then, like, and then battle Empire when they're staring down the barrel of a bad trade. Yeah. Bambo destroying exactly where the enemy are moving down here. So they have the awareness of Empire's rotation. And it's true. The, the travels are going to allow them to fix one of their big weaknesses, right? They don't have to use a relocate to push out creep waves anymore. So Slark just going to head over to all the 
all the lanes they feel safe to push. This is going to be one hell of an end game. <laughs> I'm just saying it now. Is. Like one pick off might change it all, but you've still you're still going to have buybacks. People are going to hold on to all this. Like there's only Witch Doctor and I who don't have buybacks. Oh, oh, does KP, he? KP want to take? Does he get a here. moment? Bone seven. He's right behind Scandal. Gets the initial bash on the first hit, but the kick from Apostka will buy some space and forcing Bone seven to shadow dance himself away from this engagement. Yeah. But they bring in the rest of the cavalry. The Hex though. is there from Sing Sing. So Ramsey's put into a chicken at the moment. Scandal very low on that paralyzing cast. This time it's going to go to work with the Death Lord as well. Bone 7 relocated out just a little bit further out to safety. The Magnetize hasn't really done as much work. And this time the Nova is really ticking them down. The Lean is going to go out in just a moment. Maposhka doesn't have enough life. They were all hit by Malediction as well. As a double kill for Sing Sing. They break the Aegis. The Queen of Pain oh just ticks boy. out. Abyssal and this Blade was the horrendous cool fight for Empire. Ramsey's, where do you go? Go, Bone 7. He no just way. starts ripping into you again. Uh, and that is all of Team Empire wiped from the face of the earth. Advantage is, however, lanes are pushed out for Empire. Yeah, I mean, that's the only advantage, right? You're still dead for 89 seconds, 70 seconds. These are terrible, terrible death timers to have. And yeah, that fight, I thought they might go well since the Snark ulti was forced. Yep. But then we just see Venomance come in. And it just destroys everything. It's he didn't even use the veil there, in fact. And it still just disrupted everything in that fight. I'm wondering if Empire then do not take those fights. Like, it was too much of a choke point for them. They didn't have any way they could disengage when Sing Sing came in. Like, they were locked and, con like, they were forced into the fight in a clustered area. It's also the cask. I mean, it's just so many things that destroy them in that fight. And yeah, he's going for the Melorex again. He's got 29 stolen essence. This guy's got 89, 80, yeah, 87 bonus agility. He got it. Well, he just, just bashes Slaughter to keep him out of the fight so he can take the racks. Casually drops an Abyssal on that. Well, they need to get the vision. I mean, he forced but a buyback on that Slardar and he still didn't hold his racks. That's a massive win. That's flat out just winning. Yep. So, Empire really, really crying now because if their Slardar gets picked off one more time, that's GG right now. You have to be really careful about how you play. And you're playing against the Slark. One of the most terrifying terrifying things you could be against. I'd also be more concerned about what Bone Seven gets next. He's got 5.8k gold at the moment. Uh, he yeah. can buy he can buy the Moonshard right now and still have enough money for buyback, which is probably going to be his play. That what do we got? We got come with me's energy booster. I mean, it would be the logical play, but yeah, he he probably goes for it. He's heading over to the secret shop as well, so we'll see if he picks it up. Could add any item, though, that he wants. He's, he's got to go EE style. Like, where's that rapier damage? <laughs> yeah, I, tr <laughs> I think this is truly the game where you don't go rapier. But <laughs> I, I, I've seen Bone 7 do so crazier things, so... <laughs> That's what your problem is, bro. Uh, I'm not going to be... Fine. not going to be surprised by anything he does here. Even a refresher, actually. Refresher on Slark is evil. Two ultis, two abyssal blades. It's just nasty little item. That would be interesting. Have. Right now, he's just looking for his opening. Uh, he may have to pounce to get this because the Silver Edge is just wearing off. And in fact, he just runs in instant Abyssal Blade. Yep. And that is just quick and efficient murder. Yeah, this Slark is such a monster right now. The new Abyssal Blade works so well on Slark, to be honest. That advantage which Empire pulled back, it's, it's disappearing yeah, again. It, it's out the window soon. And they're relocating. No, it was just a scan. Never mind. Looked like it could be a relocate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they d we don't really have a different thing. Like, what I actually look, prefer to see Dude. is like having like a red or a green circle appear on the map itself, so we know if it's like a rating or dire scan. Dude, uh, Beautiful things for us. Afterlife. Well, Bambo sees him. Bone Seven tries to initiate the Necro books are down, so at least they can see Bone Seven and Afterlife. Man, that damage output, maybe a little bit too much. That Afterlife will still remain alive. Bone Seven, like scandals right on top of him. Now the Death Ward again, trying to look for the scan, like for the zone out. The oh. relocate. Oh, it got him out just in the nick of time. I should but put him up the hill, but no, though. he wasn't far enough away. Komi's gonna drop. Scandal is still alive. Now Sing Sing. Oh, well, he no. coats him up in the gunk, and Sing Sing. Well, he's gonna he's gonna kill them all. This like snake. Ramses has maledict on him as well. They're all just gonna tick out, even if they do manage to kill off all of Kaipi. It won't mean bye Jack bye, because they're all gonna go down. He knows it too. You can't armor toggle that kind of jazz. You Bone cannot. 7 by its back, BT's forward, and that should actually be the game there. No slaughter for a minute, and the Beastmaster is licking his wounds back on the side shop. Yeah, I mean, this is just complete destruction. That Wisp just bailing out the Slark, he's so tanky. Just just incredible team fight here from Kaipi. 
Right. I think the team fight is incredible due to itemized though. Items though, they're just so far ahead at this point. They play a beautiful oh, the hex. Though. Scandal, the Gale is there. There's no Nova available. They get that stun with the Abyssal Blade over on Scandal. Yulset will buy in the time to blink himself away to safety. Got hit by the Maledict, and I think he actually dies from this now. Yeah, he's dead. I mean, he has. Yeah, actually, he BKBs to avoid yeah. it and then blinks away. At least he'll take the cast right. with him. He'll survive, but you're losing all three lanes of racks. Yeah, this game, I mean, they don't have the heroes to deal with Mega Creeps, so they're just going to have to recover and try to somehow prepare themselves mentally. Wait, I mean, for the, wait for the Sing Blink. He's got Nova and Vale <laughs> and with Hex. Yeah. Like, Maposhka wants to, to initiate. Sing Sing, a quick Gale. Scandal comes forward. There's the Nova, and that's the game. There is no more hope for Empire in game number one, but it is a two-game series. Makai P will be ahead after 57 minutes. They will claim the victory. Yeah, you can always tie this, so... Best of luck to Empire, they have to go back and find a different strategy here. Very well executed laning face by Kaipi. They pulled ahead strong in that one. Yeah, they did. There was a small hiccup though. Mm -hmm. There was a small hiccup. Oh yeah. They gotta but be careful with that. That face boot moment with Bamboo <laughs> on the off lane where they <laughs> lost, lost two heroes. Yeah. That's such a weird thing. That's not part of like... It's so unpredictable that that was gonna happen. Yeah, that, that, was, that was not... Uh the fun start that at least uh, Bamba was looking for, but everything seemed to work, and I think like you put the you hit the nail on the head. The vision game from Kai P was just so damn strong. The Beastmaster couldn't keep up with it once that Ag's Night Stalker kicked in, yeah. uh, and the Venomancer. Like it's just it's one of those heroes which maybe against a different lineup wouldn't have been as effective. Right. Well, I feel like they just did everything they needed to do at the right time. Kai P avoided team fights when they were weak and just played around the enemy because they have so much mobility. Mm -hmm. And then when they actually had the advantage, they were all over and just, you know, pouncing at Empire. And good game one. Mm -hmm. Game two coming up. Stay Great tuned. Start. We'll have ourselves a break. And we'll see you back here in a bit.